Hey, Brian, how's it going there today? Good, how are you? Great, thank you very much. Am I getting you from New York? Yep. Great, gotta love Long Island. <laughs> how long was it from signing with Impact to debuting on Impact? Was that something you had to hold on to for a while? I had some close friends there that I was in communication with that uh, I knew it was an option on the table and uh, something that I was looking forward to and I thought would I would be a great fit and I wound up being so. <laughs> uh, so yeah, it was a pretty smooth uh, transition. Uh, I think we kind of had like a, a almost a verbal agreement and, and things that went on from there. Uh, I was actually in the, I wasn't on Slammiversary, but I was in the building that night and uh, I think creatively, we all agreed that it would be a little more fun to keep me as an added surprise for the first TV post Slammiversary, which I thought I thought was a pretty cool spot to be in. Right, you made an interesting on-camera debut with a vignette or two where you were wearing a mask. I think a lot of people are going, "Is he a masked wrestler now?" Was that created to make some mystery happen, or am I just overthinking that? Uh, a little bit of both. Um, you know, just kind of reinventing myself. Uh, I, I don't want to be complacent and be be the same guy forever. You know, I think wrestling, even after 17 years of doing this, you're always growing, always learning, always, you know, changing. So this is an added piece I added to, you know, it's basically just an, an entrance mask. Um, but I, I thought it was a cool little added uh, mysterious aspect to my, to my look. That's all. But it's great to see that even with all the changes, you're still wearing the blue and orange Mets style. Were you a Mets fan since birth, or did that happen after they won in 86? I was always a, a baseball fan and a Mets fan. My favorite player, though, was Mike Piazza. So when he got traded in 98, uh, that just like, I mean, put me over the top. It felt like that's fate. So uh, just diehard Mets fan from that, pretty much from that moment on. Um, and I've adopted the blue and orange. It's been a couple of years now. It's been almost eight years or so. I just I always thought it was cool that you know Taz kept the the colors, or like the franchise Shane Douglas kept the you know the Pittsburgh colors. You know, stay true to it. Whereas like modern day wrestling, I, man, I don't think anyone does that. Everyone is constantly changing their their ring gear and their colors. You know, no one no one's loyal to a uh, a color scheme like that. So I thought it would be something that could set me apart a little bit. Are you a card-carrying member of the Seven Line Army, or is it just you hang out with the people who run it? Um, a little bit of both. I, my wife and I actually were at the first outing ever. Where uh, Ari, I think I believe Ari Dickey got his twentieth win. That was the, the, the milestone there. Uh, and pretty much from day one, I actually, when I lived in Queens, I would see like the, the stickers, like on a stop sign or something, and that 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 sparked the whole interest. So I was pretty, I was in on like the ground floor of it for the most part. So, uh, and I love what they bring. I mean, that what other fan base in baseball has, you know, a group like that that can go to a, a away stadium and almost take over like that. You know, if I was playing on the Mets, I would think that's pretty cool because that's another, you know, feather in their, their cap for sure. That's totally true. When I went to a game of the Kansas City Royals, there was over a thousand Mets fans in attendance there. I think all of them from the seven line army. Have you done road trips with them? I have not. With the you know the wrestling schedule, it's very hard to commit to something like that. Um, it would have to be like you know a, a week of decision kind of thing for me with the lifestyle I live. But I would absolutely love to when when things go back to normalcy. You said this week on Impact that you have just a ton of Delta Sky miles. Is that true, or has that always been your airline of choice? Uh, that's my preferred airline of choice. Yeah, which is great because in WWE they don't always care what your preferred choice is they're just kind of booking the cheapest ticket now that uh i'm in control <laughs> of my booking <laughs> to my destination i always make sure that uh you know if if available i would love to be on a delta flight thank you because they uh you know with all my status they, they treat me the best at this point and that leads into you being the most professional wrestler out there i absolutely love that topic that title whatever you want to call that did you have that when you immediately signed to impact um, it was a very kind of fluke thing in between WWE and Impact. Uh, one of my best friends in the whole world, Luke Gallows, hit me up and he asked me to do a, prom a promo that he was going to submit to some project that he's working on that he's still working on, by the way. Nothing's come of it. Anyway, it was a uh, kind of fate because I went to my wrestling school uh, with my buddy and we filmed some stuff. And I basically was just writing, I wrote like a promo in my head just describing myself. And I was, I was naming all my accolades and things like that, kind of like I did on Impact this past week. 
And the last thing I said was, I'm the most professional wrestler. And it just kind of clicked. Like, man, I really am. I really have uh, committed my life to this for so long. Um, and I, I thought it was cool, and I thought there was something to it, but I didn't really think that much of it. But then when I showed people at Impact that promo, they were like, that's it. That's what we're going to go with. So uh, I'm glad it all happened. It was all just kind of a fluke thing. Well, speaking of Mr. Gallows, he was on a show that I saw you at at City Field where it was you guys and RVD, a bunch of Impact talent was on that show. Was that a career highlight of sorts for you to enter through the stands of City Field and you know have the Mets custom jersey and all that for a match? That is one of the, I don't know if it's one of the best days of my life, but I have, it was such a bizarre day that I have like such vivid memories of it, like, like as if it just happened last weekend. Like there's ingrained in my mind so many things. Um, I'll never forget sitting on my back patio in Queens with, uh, Gallows and Mike Knox and my wife. And we were like, did that just happen? Like, what, what, what was that experience? We just lived like the whole thing. It was like a, a, a late nineties WCW show at my favorite ballpark in the whole world on a Sunday. It was <laughs> nuts. And it, it looked, the, the photos don't do it justice because, you know, you're at like a 65,000 feet a, you know, baseball stadium, but there's 8,000 people there. Like, it was not to be laughed at. Like, it was a big house and just Goldberg and the Nasty Boys and just Bret Hart and Rick Flair. It was just so bizarre to be a part of. Fun and incredible. And like you said, being a Mets fan, it was just, it was almost surreal, but what a day. And back then, you were being billed as the Prince of Queens. Are you fully embracing Long Island over Queens at this point? Uh, no, I mean, I'm so. I basically tapped out on owning Long Island to my own when Zack Ryder just exploded in, into you know the wrestling universe as the Long Island you know woo woo guy. I just figured, man, he's he's got he's got uh, Long Island all to himself. And I was truly living in Queens for I, I lived in Queens almost ten years, so uh, I mean I love Queens and I thought it was just a little bit cooler uh, moniker to it and that 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 swagger I wanted to display. You know, I thought was more the more hardened. Uh, character, I thought it fit a little better, but uh, I still get, I still like to be introduced from Bayside Queens when I do. And bring that all together. One of the things that I really appreciate about Impact is how many of the people on the roster have great projects outside of Impact and are still able to promote that within Impact. And of course, you're a big podcaster at this point. Do you have plans to launch a second podcast? Uh, anything along those lines that you want to do besides wrestling and having that one podcast? No, if it was anything, it would be wrestling related. Um, the major wrestling figure podcast that I do with Matt Cardona has really um, exploded in a way. Uh, we've batted around the idea of kind of having a podcast network, and there's things that I would like to do, and I've actually already worked on like a pilot of something that I can't really disclose. Um, but yeah, the idea that Impact allows us and embraces it is, is even way cooler. I mean, my first week at Impact, someone wrote me from the office and said, hey, can we have the graphics for your podcast? I was going, why? They're like, oh, because we want to plug it on uh, the lower third on the television program. And I think my wife was in the room when, when I read the email. My jaw was on the floor. Like, that's so not something that WWE would, would ask of you. You know, it's just cool to be, uh, for them to embrace something like that. So, uh, yeah. Are there any tie-ins between Impact and Creative Pro besides you being involved with both of them? Or are they just totally different worlds? Um, they're, they're totally different worlds, yeah. Especially here in New York, there's no, uh, we still can't even have uh, events. So Creative Pro is basically just a, a training facility at this point. Can I ask you two questions that came from big fans of yours? Sure. The first question uh, comes from a fan of yours named Steve Asia. He asked, he's a likable guy. He considers himself one. Do you think that you're the most likable guy related to Creative Pro that there is? Uh, no, that's probably a guy named Philip Cardigan and definitely not Steven Azure. I'll say that. Okay. And then, uh, another big fan of yours named Aaron Rourke wanted me to ask you, what would be your perfect match? And for that, you could choose any opponent, any venue, any pay-per-view, et cetera. Ooh, that's a, like what a, can the opponent be living or dead or what are we talking? According to Aaron, dead, living or dead, both acceptable. Let's, let's do, uh, Brian Myers versus Chris Candido at the ECW Arena. That is a f interesting match there. Okay. Two quick questions. The first one is, 
You've been inside like everybody else on the planet much more in 2020 than prior years. Is there a TV or a movie recommendation that you could pass along? I'm probably the least person to answer that question. I, I kind of avoid television in the sense that I'm already going to watch so much wrestling all week long, and then I'm going to watch old school wrestling on my own time. And uh, to track back to the Mets and sports, you know, Mets and Jets and sports talk radio I'm watching. So I, I pretty much don't even watch a single television show like a series at this point. It's just not not the way I am. Wow. Okay. And the closer, Brian, any last words for the kids? For the kids? Yeah, stay in school. Listen to your teacher. Uh, and don't do drugs.